Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, continuing to work on this D17. You saw the last video there. We got the timing and everything set there on the engine. Uh, but we got a few other things going on here before we're ready to get that thing uh, fired up. So let me switch uh, camera around here and show you what we're talking about. All right, so since the last video, there's a few other items that I've taken care of uh, here that I did not capture on video. And I'm just gonna kind of talk a little bit about that. Went ahead and replaced my oil filter. As you can see here, we've got a Wix. It's a 51515 is the Wix number for that. I've drained out all of my oil, as you can see here, and I have ordered a new uh, plug to go in there. The other one was kind of rounded out just a little bit, as you can see there, and I'm gonna have a, a new one in there. So I have not refilled the engine yet. Now, one other thing I did as well, as you can see, there used to be some kind of oil seepage around this area. I checked everything out and come to find out it was actually the dipstick uh, insert piece right here. So I pulled that out with a pair of pliers and cleaned it up well and then I put some Permatex around that just to seal it and I'm hoping that's gonna take care of our issue. Uh, let's see here, let's flip around to the other side here. I made up some connections here uh, on the carburetor. I actually took that carburetor off I separated the two halves and cleaned it out good with carb cleaner and I'm glad I did it because there was a little bit of gunk uh, built up down on the inside of that in the bowl section and there was some, also some uh, rust so that just uh, kind of cleaned everything up and made sure I didn't get anything into the jet section. Got a couple of new little hoses right here. I got some hose clamps that's coming for that. Um, I've got my fuel line, which was actually plugged on both ends. I've got that cleaned out and ready to go in, but I didn't want to go ahead and install it yet until I get a new sediment bowl installed. So that's also on order. <clears throat> and once that's in, then I can mate everything up, get it all routed and in place uh, where it needs to go. And you can see the vice grips here. That spring actually pulls over and latches into this hole. The fuel line needs to go behind that. And so I'm just kind of waiting here until I figure out exactly where the sediment bowl location is, where the fuel line is going to be connected up uh, before I do that. Cause I feel like I've got just a little bit of a bend here yet to make. If you kind of look at it over here, it's going to be pushing right there on that corner. So got a little bit of work to do there on the oil, uh, in the air cleaner. Um, bottom part here i've taken that apart and cleaned it up um actually i've dumped it out i haven't cleaned it up that's what i'm getting ready to do so got that apart uh everything else looked pretty decent so let me uh slide over here to the bench and you can see here's our reservoir that holds the oil and inside that is actually oven cleaner. I sprayed that on there earlier today and I'm just curious. I'll wipe that out here in a minute. But uh, this was all black with just different kinds of soot and stuff on it. So looks like it's going to clean it up pretty well. I won't know until I get my uh, paper towel and stuff and we'll clean that up and see what she looks like. So I'm going to do that next and then we'll go through the process of reinstalling. All right, so I'm real curious to see how well that oven cleaner actually worked so let me just try to wipe some of this out i'll put it on there pretty thick well from what i'm seeing right now it did a pretty good job it was like i said the stuff that was in here before was thick I mean, look at that that's something else i never really uh never really used it before so let me just wipe off this intersection here which might be a little bit more difficult to get it down in there okay you can see that i've got everything uh cleaned out there it really turned out nice now to refill this you can see there is an oil level mark on there which puts us looks like just up to maybe a hair bit above that inner cone. But I was looking over here in the manual, I wanted to see exactly what uh, white oil that you put in. You can see there on number nine, 
It says it's seven eighths of a quart. Uh, clean and refill oil cup daily, eight to 10 hours of use. Fill to level mark using engine oil of same viscosity as used in the oil sump. Under extreme dusty conditions, service twice a day. So with that said, I can go ahead and use the same 10W30 oil uh, weight that I'm gonna put in my engine. And I've got a quart sitting over here that I was using to just kind of flush through whenever I drain the oil. So we're gonna use that. Um, and then the rest of it's pretty straightforward. This will just slide right up underneath there. A little wing nuts will go in each of the spots there and we'll be good to go. So let me get my camera set up and we'll capture that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fill that up. Here are the kids are in the background. We just opened up the pool finally for the season. All right. So the next step is we're gonna take this over here and put it on the tractor. All right, so we just slide the I got my fuel line in the way here. Where I was explaining that earlier, let me get it out of the road. All right, I'm just slide this right back up in here. I got my washer down on the bottom side of these little ears. Tighten that up on both sides. Pretty, pretty straightforward process here. Really can't mess it up. You're just gonna tighten up on uh, both sides at the same time here. Make sure they're snug. Okay. That's it, not much to it. So there's the other wing nut right here. Okay, so we got that done. Uh, I think the next step that I wanna do in this video is go ahead and get a new uh, gauge put in here. So the old gauge was toast. I've had this tank off and I had it um, cleaned out and then lined. So I'm ready to put that new fuel gauge. I've got a new one here. So let me go get that. Um, I think in order to do it, I'm gonna have to take the tank back off. And right now, the only thing that's holding it is really just a couple of studs right there. And then you've got this piece right here that you'll loosen up and just turn it sideways, which holds your bracket. And then everything else will be ready to just lift up off of there. So let's get that done and then we'll get a new gauge put in. and the whole fuel tank now is loose. So we'll just pull it right out of there. You gotta remember on this one, I do not have the sediment bowl. So if I did, I would have had to pull from the other direction and make sure that I had all my lines disconnected. All right, so I got my uh, my new fuel gauge here. It will come with new bolts as well. You see, it's pretty straightforward. What we got, so it's just gonna slide straight in the hole just like that, and it will stay down. There's some gearing 
right up here that runs the gauge, which uh, looks pretty straightforward. I like that setup. But before we do that, what I need to do to the tank is I'll go ahead and remove the old screws out of here. And I want to take my wire wheel on my grinder and just clean up some of this rust that is around this just to kind of knock it down because I'm going to have some uh, other sheet metal or actually that, that strip that sets over this to lock everything down uh, is going to be setting on top of that. And there's a couple little thin pieces of strapping that uh, kind of insulate that so that it doesn't vibrate and make noise. Uh, so I'm gonna just clean that up right there real quick. So I will do that and then I'll jump back on here and we'll go ahead and install our fuel uh, gauge here in just a second. All right, so I went ahead and got the tank cleaned up as you can see. And I also went ahead and ran a tap in each of my four uh, thread sets here for the fuel gauge to go into. I want to make sure all that was clear. Those only go so deep. They do not penetrate through the back side here. Um, so I want to make sure that I've got full uh, depth in my thread in order to accommodate my new hardware. So next step is we're just going to take the new fuel gauge, and I, I was showing some of the mechanics on that earlier. It's really uh, pretty straightforward, not a whole lot that can mess up on these, as you can see here. So, I'm just gonna push it straight in, like so, you can't mess it up. There is a gasket on the back side of that. I guess I kinda should've pointed that out that comes on it. It is right there sure that that is there and if you happen to be reusing your old one you need to make sure you seal that up somehow or another We've got the new gauge installed at this point I'm waiting on the sediment bowl and a couple other pieces. So I will probably wait just another couple of days before that stuff comes in and then we'll kick back in here. But before that, here's the space where our fuel tank was sitting. And we got a couple of little pieces of nylon uh, cushioning there on the bottom. So if you're taking yours off and those are wore out, then go ahead and replace them. You can also see too, your wiring harness runs right down in here to your voltage regulator and up through this little section here with a grommet. Uh, if you're needing to get into that stuff to do any work, now would be the time. Everything's nice and accessible. Uh, you can see the universal there for the steering and you can inspect all of that stuff. And uh, uh, as mentioned, now's the time to do it. So anyway, that said, uh, We'll go ahead and cut off here and then I'll cut back on when we're getting ready to install that sediment bowl. All right, a little change of plans here while I'm waiting on that sediment bowl to come in and a few other components, I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and stick that front end back underneath the tractor here. So just got it suspended there on my gantry crane. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the time-lapse camera on here and we'll go ahead and slide that in underneath it. I won't put my side uh, frame rails on quite yet. I still need to get my starter on this side. The other side, eh, I might be able to do that. I'll wait till I get uh, kind of everything in place there and look at it. But at this point, I'm gonna flip over time-lapse camera. We'll go ahead and slide the front end back underneath it. All right, so you just saw there on the time-lapse camera, I got that front end slid back underneath it, and I had to go ahead and put on one of the side rails. So I did the uh, left side rail right there because that was the uh, only one that would not interfere with any other work that I have to do here. So got that thing in place and secured, and that straightened everything up. I had to go ahead and secure the back pivot point underneath the uh, uh, flywheel section right there as well. So I got that in and secured. 
And with this side rail I still off, that leaves me access to my power steering lines underneath the pump, which are not uh, on and tight yet. My starter, which will go in. And then once that is done, then I'll go ahead and slide this other side rail on. But for right now, we're just gonna leave it off. So with that said, uh, still waiting on that sediment bowl assembly to come in and a few other parts. So we'll break away right now when I come back. I will be putting the fuel tank uh, back together and getting it installed.